Hello friends, uh, welcome to the tutorials on uh, design of steel structural elements. So the first topic uh, which I am going to take in uh, these tutorials is uh, regarding bolted connections. So we will just quickly see uh, some of the important points in the bolted connections and uh, then we will see some uh, uh, numerical problems also. Few types of numerical problems I am going to uh, do in this. right? quickly uh, we'll just uh, rush through some of the important points in bolted connections right okay now the first point is the classification of the bolts the bolts are classified as the first type that is unfinished bolts okay and then the finished bolts and we have something called as hsfg bolts these are the new type of connections uh, or the sorry bolts which are in use so the hsfg uh, mean to say high strength friction grip bolts right so we'll see what are these hsfg bolts further okay now uh, this diagram uh, tells you some parts of a typical bolt we have so uh, this is a very similar one very typical one we have this uh, something called as the uh, bolt head okay then we have the nominal diameter of the bolt which this portion is called as the shank portion okay so this portion we call that as shank portion right and now this portion that is from here up to here is called as the threaded portion okay so this portion is called as the threaded portion in the shank portion we can see there are no threads and the, in the threaded portion we have some threads and this is the nut of the bolt which will be tightened through this threaded part and it will come up to this point and it will clamp there now uh, the diameter of bolt when i say the diameter of the bolt the diameter is usually specified at the shank portion and not at the threaded portion now uh, when i want to find the cross section area of the bolt there are two types of cross sections what we can find here the first type of cross section is the cross section at the shank and it is denoted by as and the cross section at the threaded portion and it is denoted by am right so since the bolts are in a circular fashion so the shank portion area is given by pi by 4 d square where is d is the diameter of the bolt and in the threaded portion uh, we can't actually find the actual cross section area so we may take this as 0 0.8 times pi by 4 d square that is 0 0.8 times the cross section area at the shank portion okay right so this is typically a bolt okay we have bolt head shank threaded portion uh, the diameter of the bolt is denoted as the cross section area at the shank portion okay so this is regarding the part of bolt now coming to the main important topic uh, which is high strength friction grip bolts most of the times it has been asked in the previous year question papers uh, like what is the hsfg bolt and uh, explain the working of hsfg bolt uh, for that case you need to just understand these three figures using these three figures if you explain in one or two lines i think <coughs> Uh, uh, it, it will advantage it will benefit you okay now the first figure that, that is the first two figures okay these two right these are for the normal kind of bolts that is non hsfg bolts okay so these two figures tell us how is the working of normal bolt and now this figure that is the third one will actually tell us how is the working of an hsfg bolt okay now uh, we'll just see uh, the first two parts okay right here uh, we can see that this is the bolt and this is a typical lap joint so this lap joint has been done using the bolts now this bolt is used to connect these two plates that is this plate and this one now we can see that when I apply an external load okay here that is which is already shown when I apply that external load this bolt will have some bearing on these plates can you see now these bolts will have some bearing on these bolts now uh, due to this bearing there will be means uh, this uh, external load will take care of this uh, will take care by this uh, bearing action on the plates okay now in the second figure we can see that uh, the same uh, two plates which are using the lap joint uh, now these are the external loads which we have applied right now the shearing action of the bolt will take care of the externally applied load okay in the first part the bearing of the bolt on the plate is taking care of the external load in the second part shearing of the bolt is taking care of the externally applied 
load okay so these two actions together will take care of the externally applied load in case of normal bolts now when i come to the hsfg bolt there is something different action which is happening now what is that action when i apply some external tension on the bolt okay you just listen here carefully when i apply some external tension on the bolt what happens these two plates will fit with each other means they will clamp with each other this clamping force will actually produce some friction right this clamping force will actually produce some friction between these two plates now when i apply and some external loads this friction between these two plates will take care of the load right now this friction which is developed by produce putting some extra tension will take care of the externally applied load so that there should not be any slip between the plates now this is actually the working of hsfg bolts right so you have to understand these three figures carefully and you can justify your answers very easily now we'll just quickly see what are the advantages joints are rigid in hsfg bolts uh, so that no slip takes between the joint so first one as load transfer is mainly by the friction the bolts are not subjected to any shearing or bearing as that of normal loads high static strength due to high frictional resistance that is one of the advantage high fatigue strength since nuts are prevented from loosening because they are tightened some with some extra precaution now in case of hsfg bolts we get smaller number of bolts because the bolt strength of the hsfg bolt is higher so when the bolt strength is higher we get some very less number of bolt bolts that can be used so this gives us the economy in the steel now what are the disadvantages the metal cost is very high and we need to give some special attention for the workmanship especially to give them right amount of tension or that torque so we have some different codes for that <coughs> which should be used now the sixth uh, important uh, thing in bolted connection is uh, this is a uh, regarding terminologies in the bolted connection now this is a lap joint okay uh, some externally applied loads are there on the lap joint now these dots are actually the bolts now the distance center to center distance between the consecutive bolts that is center to center distance between the consecutive bolts parallel to the applied load it is denoted by the term called p that p is actually pitch right the dis center to center distance between the consecutive bolts parallel to the applied load is denoted by the term p that is pitch now the center to center uh, distance between the consecutive bolts perpendicular to the applied load is called as g that is gauge okay that is gauge distance perpendicular to the applied load is called gauge now the distance uh, between the center of the bolt to the edges of the plates are called end and edge distance so, yeah so this figure uh, should easily tell you what is the pitch and gauge distances now this is regarding the staggered pitch uh, when we put the bolts in a staggered pattern that is zigzag pattern right so the di uh, distance center to center distance between the consecutive bolts in a zigzag pattern is called the staggered pitch right it is very easy to understand from this figure now the seventh and the very important uh, terms are some regarding some uh, the failure of bolted connections uh, the first is shear type of failure here we can see that this is the lap joint and this lap joint has been connected by a bolted connection when i apply some external loads here and here okay so what happens if the bolt is very weak and if the plates are very strong and if the externally applied load is more than the shear capacity of this bolt means more than the what shear what amount of shear the bolt can take then the bolt will have a shearing force exactly at this face okay exactly at this face that is that face is called the shearing plane so at that face the bolt will fail in shear you can see uh, the top part of the bolt has come on the left hand side and the bottom part of the bolt has come on the right hand side okay it happens like this because of the load applied here and here okay so this is due to the uh less shear capacity bolt now uh, here we can see that only one single shear, uh, shear plane is there so this type of uh, is uh, failure is called a single shear plane shear plane failure and here you can see this is the single shear okay the first figure and here this is the double shear okay it can happen also double shear because we have two shear planes 
so I think the diagrams should clearly tell you uh, the what type of failure it is yeah here you can see this figure clearly telling you the shear failure of the board here this face is actually okay I will just uh, uh, do with a color so this face is actually the shear plane the bolt has exactly filled at the shear plane because of the uh, less shear capacity of the bolt now the next uh, type of failure is the bearing failure of plates okay here what happens if the bolt is very strong okay and the plate is very weak and if the shearing capacity of the bolt is much more higher than the externally applied load what will happen now the, since the plate is very weak the bolt will crush some part of the plate means it will have some bearing on the plate and the plate will fail in the bearing okay now this is actually the failure of the plate not the bolt that's why it is called bearing failure of the plates and not of that of the bolts now what is meant by tearing failure okay now here also the bolts are very strong and the externally applied load is too high such that uh, tearing occurs across the line of the bolt why it happens actually when I take a cross section here okay when I take a cross section across the line of the board you can see that when I take cross section here okay and this cross section what is the difference between these two cross sections in this cross section we don't have any deduction of the area of the plate but in this cross section we have the deduction of the plate because of the bolts okay so that's why what happens when we apply external applied load so the plate may tear something like this you can do some simple uh, very ex exercise you take a piece of paper okay you mark some two holes in that you try to apply some load here with your hands and you can see that the plate will exact or the paper will fail exactly here okay you can do that some small very small kind of exercise to just to know how it happens uh, yeah now uh, I found some uh, two interesting uh, videos on the sharing and the bearing failure of the plates uh, on the YouTube uh, you can just uh, go through those things you just type uh, shear failure or the bearing failure of the bolted connections in the YouTube and you can get these two videos which will explain you uh, uh, the failure of the plates okay so in the next video we'll see uh, regarding some design strength of the boards yeah thank you bye